What's up, boopers? Welcome to the sixth and final of the major Black Desert Online guides. After this, it's class guides. Yeah! Now, this guide will cover guilds, PvP, and the end game world bosses of Black Desert Online. So let's get started. Boop. First thing we need to know is how guilds work. And like most things in this game, it's completely different than other MMOs. You can form a clan for free at any level by talking to guild managers found in any major city. A clan is like a mini guild chat room that you can invite anyone into just like you invite party members by walking up to them. At level 40 or 50, varying on game version, you can upgrade your clan to a guild using 100,000 silver and talking to the same vendor or create a guild by yourself from scratch. Any members of the clan upgraded will auto enter the guild but have no contract. What the fuck's a contract, you ask? Great question. Hold on to it for a second. Of the 100,000 you pay, all of it will be instantly entered into your guild funds. These are manageable by the guild leader but not retrievable. Guild leaders cannot steal all the guild's funds for himself. And guilds can only have three ranks. A leader, officers, and regular members. Joining a guild is done by signing a contract to the guild using the same method as party inviting by targeting the player in person. Now, signing it will cost money for the guild, based on the length of the contract, from 1 day to 30 days. The contract will also include how much you will get paid daily by the guild from guild funds. Once you sign the contract, all of your alts will also be in the guild as well. You can still quit any time, but if you quit before your contract expires, you'll have to pay the contract fee back to the guild and leaving will make you unable to rejoin a guild for 24 hours. A guild will have to have no contracts in order to be disbanded. A guild leader can also increase your salary once a day based on your activities, and once your contract is up, he can offer to renew it, and you can choose to accept or decline. Guild leaders can also kick you at will, but they'll have to pay three days worth of salary to you up front. And why would he do that? Because maybe you're ruining the guild's karma, but we'll touch on that in a moment. Guilds will also get a weekly upkeep cost once they go over 30 members, and it gets higher the more members join from then on. If the upkeep cost is not paid, guild features will start being disabled, and in emergencies the guild leader has the option to pay from his pocket. If guild funds run out and aren't able to pay members salary, then they'll be able to leave the guild without any penalties because you ain't paying them. The main thing to do in a guild is PvP, Siege, or Guild Quests. Guild Quests can be accepted by the Guild Master of a Guild or its officers through the Guild tab. They can be to kill stuff, trade, craft, or gather. And when Guild members contribute to completing the quest, they, as well as the Guild, receive some silver, the Guild gets karma, and Guild points. Another way to get guild points are when any of the members in the guild earn contribution points through doing regular quests. Now, guild points are used to progress through the guild's skill tree, which provide passives to all the guild members, such as more attack and health, activatable buffs like 10% experience, though the activatables require consumables that the guild leader can buy from guild shops here to activate the buffs. The guild leader can also create an emblem for the guild by buying this paper token from the guild store, then creating a 60x60 60 60 PNG file and placing it in this folder right here, and naming the PNG file this, written right here. The instructions are given to you when you try to do it in the guild interface. Then, once it's placed, the guild leader just uses the item and BLAM! New emblem. Now, that's the boring guild stuff. The fun stuff branches into PvP, a big part of Black Desert Online's endgame. I want to preface this that Korea doesn't seem to really like PvP so much and has placed a lot of restrictions on it that I imagine will change for the NA and EU launch, so don't take all of this information too literally. Guilds can attempt to claim nodes and regions by battling for them in PvP combat. The battles are enabled three times a week on the Korean version. You can attempt to claim nodes on Wednesdays and Sundays, and you can attempt to claim regions on Saturdays. Claiming a node will put your guild's emblem on it, and there are two types. There are tax nodes that will generate silver for your guild over time, which the leader can claim by just visiting the nodes manager. 
And tax nodes come in three levels, one giving the least amount of silver, three giving the most. There are also crafting nodes which will double the resources gathered from that area, but it's pretty useless and big guilds rarely go after nodes like this. And there are some nodes that are both tax and craft nodes. And the region nodes, on the other hand, will put an emblem of your guild on the major city of the region, such as Hidel or Calpheon, and allow you to tax the auction house, among other things. Now, to enter a battle to take the nodes, you first need to purchase a command post, the cheapest being about 200k from the guild vendor. Once your guild leader buys it, he can place it at whatever node or region he wants to fight for and construct it using workers from the guild members. If it is constructed in time for the siege time, you and your guild members can participate in the siege battle. Their job is to protect your siege command post in that region while destroying the command posts of all of the opposing guilds within 4 hours by joining the correct channel for that battle. If you do this, you'll claim the node. If the battle ends in a draw, the node will be unclaimed and marked on the map by a red cross swords. There are many other purchasables and constructible things for battles like towers, cannons, barricades, and elephant mounds! Woo! Command posts can take some time to destroy, and it can be sped up using siege weapons such as cannons that are craftable in siege weapon workhouses. You can track which guilds have command posts set up to contest what areas, as well as their combat stats, etc. So you know who you're going to go up against if you want to fight for a node. Now this form of PvP is the main form of endgame, as the silver generated from level 3 tax nodes and regions will make your guild quite rich. Now let's jump into the other forms of PvP in Black Desert Online, first with Guild Wars. Guild Wars can be started by a guild leader at the cost of 1 million silver and 100k karma. The costs are pretty high on the Korean version and hopefully they'll be lowered for NA and EU. Once a war is started, it cannot be cancelled until one hour has passed, and maintaining the war has an upkeep cost of 300,000 silver every two hours. Pretty expensive to want to kill somebody. Now, you can declare a maximum of six wars at a time, and while typical PvP has level restrictions, guild wars do not, and there are no penalties. You can freely kill anyone of the opposing guild as long as they aren't in safe zones. The reason one might do this is to contest world bosses or rob guilds of imperial trade goods without having to suffer the enormous costs of PvPing outside of sieges and guild wars. What costs, you ask? Let's learn about the beautiful karma system while praying to god it is changed before it hits NA and EU. To initiate open world PvP and Black Desert Online, you have to flag yourself by pressing an icon beside your health bar only available once a character on your account reaches level 50 in the Korean version and I think 30 in the Russian version. Flagging will allow players to hit you and you to hit all players above level 40. You can have a maximum of 300k karma and karma is gained by killing monsters slowly. If you hit a non-flagged player you will lose 10 karma however and if you kill a non-flagged player you will lose 200k karma meaning you'll hit zero karma if you kill two people. Having low karma will give you severe penalties in Black Desert Online Korean version. This includes your gear dropping, losing enchants, breaking crystals, respawning in random locations, guards refusing to talk to you, and sometimes even attacking you. Whereas if you actually kill people while you're flagged, they suffer no losses and you gain nothing making open world PvP completely pointless. Also note that if you are in a guild and lose karma, you'll also reduce your guild's karma, which is a good way to get yourself kicked from a guild. Another form of PvP and the pseudo dueling system of Black Desert Online is arenas. These are located outside of any major city and inside the arena you can attack any player not in your group. Killing them incurs zero penalties and you are even allowed to resurrect on the spot, so this is a great way to practice PvP. There are also 3v3 arenas and something called the Crimson Battlefield. Crimson Battlefield is joined after level 50 by talking to your Black Spirit. This will enter you on a team by yourself or with your party 
and put you up against an enemy team of players that will be become marked on your map if you encounter them. And these teams can hunt each other down. Killing players in the Crimson Battlefield earns you tokens that you can trade for some gear. And it is, in my opinion, a pretty fun alternative to open world PvP. It's like open world PvP that you have to opt into. If only I could find a Korean that actually did it. I can't seem to find anybody to kill anytime I join on the Korean version. If you kill many players during a Crimson Battle round though, you will be marked on the map with a special icon so everybody knows you're a badass. And each battle resets every 30 minutes, forcing you to have to rejoin but your stats in the Crimson Battles will be tracked over a leaderboard. For the CV3 arenas, they can be done by a similar method, just having a group of three people then registering the same way you join a Crimson Battleground through your Black Spirit. And you will be put up against another group of three. However, this is very unpopular as there isn't really any rewards for participating in it yet, so I guess it's just fun. And as the last form of endgame in Black Desert Online, let's go over world bosses! Now there aren't endgame dungeons, but we've got lots of bosses to kill. While the majority of world boss scrolls can be obtained as Black Spirit daily quests, or weekly quests, or looted from monsters, or bought from mileage, and some are even created by putting items in certain formations in your inventory, there are some stronger, more difficult world bosses that spawn on timers or require guilds to summon them. Guild summon bosses can be summoned using guild summon boss scrolls. There are two types, small and large. Small taking about 5 people and large taking about 20. And these bosses are a good source of some of the better weapons in the late game, such as Liberto. The best gear will be found by hunting down the larger world bosses. Now unfortunately, in the current state of Black Desert Online, they're kind of zerg fests. But these may give incentive to start a guild war to deny other guilds the right to get the boss drop. The older boss that drops a good weapon is called Zaka. He spawns in the Serendia Temple on a 12 hour respawn timer based on the last time he was killed and based on the channel you are in having separate spawns for every channel. The weapon he drops is on par however with the blue weapon from guild bosses or crimson battleground, only having different stats but being a bit more troublesome to enchant, because it is not blue it is yellow. The newer world boss is a dragon that spawns in the Valencia desert far to the east. Valencia Desert is a unique area of Black Desert Online where you will be required to drink purified water during the day to prevent heat stroke and drink octagonal tea at night to prevent hypothermia and carry a tent with you for sandstorms and all the while your map will be disabled in the desert while you traverse the zone. Now this dragon is pretty hard for me to find information on and I didn't reach level 55 to battle him but apparently he has a chance to drop legendary weapons for players that are probably a nightmare to upgrade so have fun with that guys! And that's it! I've covered the basics on almost every aspect of Black Desert Online, so we'll be done with general Black Desert Online guides and it's time to start going over class guides to help you guys decide which class you want to play on launch. And we'll be starting with Ranger, but until then, I am booping out. Boop.